Hello, welcome to my channel. So we are on template number 28. It is the envelope for a 5 by 7 card and small pocket. Um, almost done. We will have a dimensional envelope in envelopes for five, 6 by 6 and 3 by 3 So <coughs> we're on the last of them, which is envelopes. And I had said at the beginning that, you know, the end looked like all envelopes. And I wasn't real sure that I was going to do them. But I did say I would do all the templates. So the templates now consist of envelopes. And I do want to use up this pad. So we're using papers from this pad for these envelopes. So for this envelope... I'm going to use this pad right here, this paper right here. Um, this was such a pretty paper pad, but all that's left is, um, actually, I'm surprised this one's still here. And then I will see if there's any left. There's also a small pocket on this one. And more than likely, we're going to have to use another sheet of paper for that. Which probably will be this one. So I might as well go ahead and take it. Oh, it's already out. Alright. So I'll put that to the side. And I'm going to pull this over. And actually, I think this time I'm going to... It's a big envelope. It's, it's taking up quite a bit of space here. Um, I'm going to leave this in the book this time and not pull it out. The instructions. Uh, yeah, this is taking up quite a bit of space. I don't... I'm going to pull it all the way to the corner. Now, you can tape this down, whatever. When I do these, I emboss it. What I found out from the other one that I did. This outside line is the envelope. This inside line is for the liner. I'm not making a liner. So if you want to do a liner, of course, do the liner. But for me, I'm just going to do the envelope. If I was going to do the liner, I really just like to do a flap and a little bit down into the body to hold that flap in, you know, so it's not noticeable. That, But I don't see a point of lining all of this other stuff. I don't know why you would. Nobody's going to see it unless, of course, you have like one of those um, envelopes where the whole thing opens up. I'm wondering if I want it to rip. <laughs> but I won't rip it. So I emboss it so I don't have to erase. And to help with the embossing, I always put a silicone mat. A silicone mat. This is the Diamond Press silicone mat. And that just keeps it firm enough underneath but has enough give so that I can still emboss it. You know, better than just on something hard. I hope lifting that up didn't just mess up my placement of the stencil, but we will find out here in a minute. Okay. I think I held it together pretty good. And it looks like it's good. 
I don't see double lines or anything, so that looks good. Now, what I had said last time, too, was I found when you do these templates, I'm calling it stencil and they call it template, but that pattern paper is harder to see on. So, that's why I went ahead, because sometimes white paper is hard to see it on also. So, I, um, I found sometimes... The opposite side that I embossed is the easier part to see on. So, I did my embossing on the pattern side because even still the white's going to be easier than the patterned. And because the raised part, not the raised part, but the, the where it's kind of sunk in, brings it kind of raised here that is easier to see also so since it's white I wanted to make sure it was going to be easier to see so I turned it upside you know I did the template straight on the pattern because the last time I did it I turned the paper over and did stenciling on this side and then it was a little bit harder to see than it should have been, even though I still had no problems seeing it. Um, so, yeah, so if you want it to be easy, the darker the cardstock, the better. Or if there's a texture on it, like a linen texture or whatever then that's even better. Um, it breaks the texture down and so it makes it very, very noticeable. I didn't do a very good job on that chip. You can see it's not rounded pretty like it should have been. So, we have our score lines. Nice, right? So here's what works for me. I like it. <laughs> I don't know why, but this one just seemed like it turned out well. Now, you can see in the picture that they used this and put a mat and it's not on this stencil it's on the previous one this design I don't to me if I'm making a pretty decorative envelope I'm gonna use the pretty decorative envelope right so I'm just gonna write right on here if that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna use double-sided tape and and last time I didn't show this, so that's why I thought this time I will. Um, just, you know, normally I would glue this, but I wanted to make sure I remembered <laughs> to show you this. So I'm just going to take the tape from here. And this is good holding tape. I think this is the Anna Griffin one, I believe the reason I say that is it's either the Anna Griffin or it's the um, one from the Dollar Tree. And I do not believe that the Dollar Tree would have this good a tape. That's why I think it's the Anna Griffin. I know it's not Spellbinders because this is the Spellbinders, right, with the um, cardboard. You know, it's it's a little thinner. Um, where this one's a little bit wider, not a lot wider, but a little bit wider. It's got the little plastic thing inside. Maybe that is cardboard, but... It's why, anyways, it, in it, in it. Seems like it holds a little bit better. That's why I figured it was Anna Griffin. 
Now, if you come over like I did here, remember it's double sided, so I'll pull it off. I'll pull the lining off. And then I'm just going to stick the tape back on itself. And it's it's going to still hold the paper, or, you know, all of that. It's still going to do all that because it's double-sided. So it'll stick to itself. And stick to the paper. And I just want to get these little edges... And then what I want to show is, okay, I'm going to go ahead and fold this up. So the main reason I wanted him to make sure I kept the double-sided tape up. And see, look at how nice that worked. Anyways, was to show that here I've made an envelope and I don't want to have to worry about gluing it later or what I'm going to do later. And so I would just go ahead and put the double-sided tape on the envelope for later to seal it up and of course <laughs> and the better the better tape not so much good for here you want your recipient to be able to open it this is going to be hard for them to open but it does work, and if they have to rip it or use an envelope opener, you know, they used to have those. Kind of looked like this, but it had a smaller side, and they stuck it in the, the corner here and ripped it. Nice. I don't think people get that much mail anymore to use those. I remember my grandma always had one. So there's that. So the small pocket now on here and I'm gonna look you know it's not gonna fit on this this scrap not at all I wish I had some oh you know what wonder if it would fit on no no so that's not gonna work so I'm gonna have to do it on this and I'm not going to worry about which way they go. I could try to make them kind of square so they kind of match that. And depending on how I want it, that's where I'm going to lay this, right? So I'm just going to stick this in a corner here. And it's kind of away from me, but these are going to be your score lines. So that's where you're going to want to kind of line things up. I'm going to go just outside of there. That means I got to come down. And uh, there we go. So I like to stick to one thing. I don't like jumping around when I do the template. So right now I'm doing the outline. And I don't want to jump to the score lines. Because then I start to confuse myself as to what I've done and what I haven't done. So I'm just sticking to these outside lines. Okay, now I'm going to do my score lines. If I had gone ahead and jumped, because it would have been so easy to just go straight across, then I might have forgot, you know, to come down here or something. And I don't want to have to worry about that. So I stick to one thing. I stick to what I'm working on at the time. So let's see. We need to cut this out. And I like to cut away my big pieces as soon as possible. Usually I've been fed up by now and I've already cut it off. 
but right now I'm doing pretty good. It's not so, it's, it's starting to get to me. <laughs> but I don't want to chop this paper up too bad because I think it's still going to be a big enough sheet to use for something. And now, get that away. Score line, score line, score line. I think this goes in side. Oh, look, I didn't cut that right. Right, I was being too kind of lackadaisical and left it a little big. This goes in, and there we go. And I'm trying to see. I wasn't going to take this off, but I'm looking. And I'm trying to see which way they folded this all up. Because here you don't see no tabs. So... It's got to be uh, like that, then that won't show tabs, right? Then it doesn't show the tabs. But if you look, this needs to be trimmed. I'm going to check my score here. But yeah, that's sticking up a little bit. So I'm going to trim that a little bit. And I can still see that score line, so... That makes sense, but since it's not going to be a big, big deal because that's behind, then there we go. And see, it's still sticking up. Still sticking up. I'm going to try to keep it, but I'm not too concerned about it because, like I said, this part doesn't even show when it's all put together. But you don't want somebody looking at it later going, hey, <laughs> you didn't do this right. So I'm going to put some tape. On here. And on here. Burnish it down good so it's easier to get off. Sometimes it helps to use one of the little pokey tools and sometimes it doesn't. So. And that would just be stuck down. And now we have a little pocket. And if we look at the other side, they've got the pocket on the envelope. So they just did that. So you can do it there. You can do it here. You could do it here. Then if that's like a gift card or something in there, then when they open it, right? It keeps that closed, or you could pull it up, and it keeps it partial closed. You can always decorate them more. Um, to me, a decorated, you know, using a pattern paper for an envelope is pretty much all I need to do. I don't usually feel the need to do that much decorating. I'd rather spend that time on the card. 
So, anyways, that's it for number 28. That's for a 5x7 card and a small pocket. Let me give you some measurements. So, the envelope finished is just under seven and a quarter and just under five and a quarter and this is two and a quarter by about two and three quarters but this part here is about two and a half all right so there we go and that coordinates well. All right, thank you for joining me. If you like my channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. And I hope you will join me again. Bye-bye now.